Welcome back. You are tuned into the Labor Forum here on WRFG 89.3 FM in Atlanta. Uh, I'm Diane Mathewitz, co-host Paul McLennan is here, and I always want to thank our uh, other two team members. We've got Christopher Hollis on the board. He's the one that makes uh, the, make sure you can hear us. And then we have Ozzy Ibrahimi, who is our videographer, so that if you um, want to see this program on our YouTube channel, uh, she's the one who's responsible for it, and we thank her very much. All right. It seems like just a few minutes ago, we were together going under brushes and bushes <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. jumping over creeks. Okay, so for <laughs> folks who don't know what that is a reference to, Don O'Neill is here in the studio and also Annette Taylor. Both of them played a major role in organizing the Rise Up uh, activity that took place at Stone Mountain this past Saturday in response to a white power, white supremacist. KKK flag, Confederate flag waving uh, rally that was organized and at the time of their announcement claimed that they were going to have to have up to 2,000 fully armed, gun toting uh, folks rallying at Stone Mountain. And so Rise Up was one of the organizations, along with All Out ATL, that uh, spent considerable time and energy trying to figure out a way to. Um, marshal a really uh, appropriate and well-crafted uh, message, uh, not just to these racists, but also to the community at large. So welcome, Don O'Neill and Annette Taylor. Thanks for having us. You're so welcome. All right, uh, let's just start first with explaining to the listeners uh, a little bit about the purpose or how Rise Up came to be. And then we'll talk a little bit about how it is you approached uh, this. You know, really, it's kind of a crisis. It, it's a community crisis, yes. in my opinion, when avowed racists claim that they're going to take public space mm -hmm. and, pro and uh, shout out um, their uh, vile uh, rhetoric. All right, so a little bit about Riza. Okay. I think this is, so you should say your name. So people can see it's Dawn speaking. Hi, this is Dawn O'Neill, and I am a member of Rise Up. Rise Up is a social justice organization. Um, we do a lot of work around police violence in the community, a lot of work around housing and education, and we fight for people who cannot fight for themselves sometimes. I became a member of Rise Up um, a year ago through street protests. And I just saw the coordination and the discipline and the planning that went into every single protest, the strategicness of every single protest, and I knew that that's a, a part of a group that I wanted to be a part of. All right, so and that will go to you real quick. Um, were you involved in the uh, initial conversations about Rise Up taking a, uh, an action? Yes, um, Saturday. Seems like it was just yesterday, but it was Saturday. Uh, yes, uh, this is an. I uh, I definitely was involved um, in those conversations, um, discussing what our uh, direct plan of action was going to be um, as we approached Stone Mountain uh, on Saturday, and um, we were very organized. We were very strategic uh, in our planning. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, going into the situation. Um, just with as much uh, solidarity um, as possible um, and we want to make sure that all of our members um, were uh, had, had the uh, knowledge and skills um, to be able to successfully participate uh, in a protest um, like this. All right so I was there and um, I commented earlier on another program on WRFG and I think also I was interviewed by RT um, television stringer and I made the comment that uh, I've been on lots of demonstrations against the Klan and almost all of them have been in city streets and uh, you know this certainly was the first time of a kind of activity that took place on such a huge really possible expanse of territory and land and uh, I complimented the organizers um, because uh, for the most part, this is something that's an unknown. I mean, it's 
you can figure out all the various possible scenarios, but you don't honestly know what's going to take place. Whereas, you know, when it's on a main street in Atlanta, you, you, you know the lay of the land, you know where the, you know where things are. Um, I wanted to say, uh, I really want this conversation not to be so much about this happened and that happened and all like that. But I do think people who have relied on TV coverage and or the press, um, uh, newspapers, have truly gotten a totally misshapen, yes. I don't even know how yeah, to describe it, view of what took place. And so for the most part, most people don't even know about the action that took place at the front right. gates. Yes. Uh, so maybe you could talk about why and uh, how it is that you determined to try to slow down, shut down entrance to the front gates of, of uh, Stone Mountain Park on Saturday. Uh, Diane, as you know, um, the plan was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was truly orchestrated perfectly. Um, Rise Up members had pennies. It's $15 and some change to get into the park. And we uh, plan to pay, but we plan to pay in pennies very slowly, one cent at a time. Uh, we had three cars, you know, blocked up three lanes, pulled up. Um, of course, they met us there with shotguns. They were lined up in formation with shotguns. We pulled up to the gate, and slowly each person paid in pennies. Um, while we were sitting in the cars, we also had um, conference calls. So we knew exactly what to do at exactly what time. Um, the first person to step out of his car was one of um, our members, Reed Goldman. And I could just hear the cops say, get back in your car, get back in your car. Reed was beautiful. He turned around. He acted, I don't know what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> and, it was, and at that moment, we just heard the word, go, go, get out. And we just ran. Um, I, we all got out. The banners flew up. And we took up space. And we took up space with so much black love and joy. Um, we got out. We sang. We danced. Um, while other people passed out literature. Mm -hmm. And we held that gate for 35 minutes, blocking traffic all the way up to 285, they said. And it was wonderful. I don't know if Annette was. Uh, yeah, I'll just, mm -hmm. um, just bounce off of what Dawn said. Um, we planned a direct action to, uh, to uh, hold up, successfully hold up the main entrance at Stone Mountain Park um, as your getting off 78. Um, I was responsible for live streaming the event and, and uh, doing some of the social media um, stuff. Um, and while we, as we approached, uh, one of the members that was uh, in front of us actually began paying uh, the $15 admission fee in pennies, which slowed down our line. So I was able to get up and start um, filming as we all uh, got out and, and started singing. and. Um, and uh, as Don said, just spreading black joy and black love and uh, spreading positivity and, and uh, standing together, holding hands, dancing, um, just joining each other in solidarity and, um, you know, trying to have uh, conversations with, with anybody who would, who would talk to us, you know, um, and just trying to spread knowledge and, and spread love. Um, and we definitely uh, succeeded in making some type of an economic impact as well. Um, which was which was also something that um, you know we wanted to accomplish. Um, so the fact that we shut shut it down, uh, there were a lot of people that actually turned around. Um, and as you know, later on during the day, the the entire park uh, got shut down, which uh, which definitely um, impacted them financially as well. So uh, we're proud of uh, we're proud of our actions that day for sure. I think um, there may be some listeners who are new to Atlanta. In Georgia and may not really know the incredibly sordid history of, uh, of how the state of Georgia came to own uh, this park which is a dedicated Confederate memorial. And so uh, folks should know that, the, uh, that in uh, 1915, uh, following uh, the release of the, the pro-segregationist, pro-Klan movie, Birth of a Nation, and the hanging of, um, oh my god, I just blanked, the Jewish man, help me. Uh, Frank. Frank, Leo Frank, 
Um, the Klan met on the top of Stone Mountain in 1915 and burned a crude cross, and that was the symbolic re, um, re in the igniting of Klan activity in the South, and it grew to have actually millions of members over the next several decades. Um, the uh, Daughters of the Confederacy in 1916 uh, uh, made a suggestion about there actually be a carving being put on the mountainside of the three Confederate so-called heroes, Robert E. Lee, uh, Jefferson Davis, and Stonewall Jackson. Um, the land was originally owned by the Venables, and uh, the Venables were Ku Klux Klan members. And for a time, uh, the land had a, an attachment to it that the Klan was to be able to be allowed at any time to be able to use Stone Mountain for its ceremony. Cross burnings. Uh, later, um, in the um, you know, I can't remember the exact year, but uh, in I think it was '58, the state of Georgia actually purchased this land, um, and of course this was in the time of the massive resistance against uh, Brown versus the Board of Education and a variety of other civil rights Supreme Court rulings. And uh, they actually, it was the state of Georgia who actually finished the carving on the mountain. It finally took until 1972. Uh, the park is now still state owned, um, but it is, um, there's a uh, authority that operates it. There's a state law that nothing can be changed on the carving on the uh, bass relief on the mountain without legislative approval. Uh, for folks who've never been there, and I have to tell people, I never was there until Saturday. Uh, there is a plaza with all the Confederate secessionist flags that fly all the time. And uh, the, not just the Klan, but all kinds of uh, right-wing and racist groups have used this park. And certainly since uh, the killings in, in South Carolina, where there's so much attention being to how it is that state entities still are financially supporting, produce, you know, keeping up all manner of Confederate memorials, all manner of streets named for Confederate generals, all, just the, how the whole atmosphere is this continued um, glorification mm -hmm. of a slaveocracy. Mm -hmm. Uh, this has certainly created much more situations at Stone Mountain. And that is the context in which these uh, Klan's people in December of last year announced that they were going to have this rally on May, uh, sorry, April 23rd, which is sandwiched between Hitler's <laughs> birthday and Confederate Memorial yes. Day. So that's a little background, and so that sort of supplies why, um, you know, any, any visible right-wing white supremacist, fascist, uh, you know, rally uh, requires a response, but why this one in particular? Mm -hmm. I want to now go to the media coverage of the event. Yes. Now yeah. here's what, it, and to me it's not, and that's why I think WRG is so valuable listeners, uh, because you're always going to hear from the people who organize something. And this happens whether there's a strike, the workers are always portrayed in the worst kind of way yes. when there's any kind of action or militancy or that they even have a picket line. It uh, doesn't matter if it's Black Lives Matter, Black and Traffic. I mean, it's always never the issue, the yes. reason why people yes. are doing something. Yes. It's always just this kind of very sensationalist yes. thing. So I saw no headline that didn't have the word protester and the word violence yes. attached to it. I saw no coverage where the white supremacists had the word violent no. describing right. them. <laughs> so I want right. the two of you to comment on this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Go. <laughs> um, I was like appalled when I turned on the news. I was appalled. I was so angry. I was angry all over again. <laughs> um, to watch what happened? Well, just being at the park, we didn't, I witnessed no violence at the park. I witnessed a lot of um, emotion, a lot of people 
um, voicing their opinions at the police. I witnessed no violence at all. I, I witnessed solidarity. I witnessed people standing up in the face of tyranny and aggression and violence. Let's say <clears throat> we always talk about terrorism. The country talks about terrorists and terrorism so much. The Klan is a terrorist organization. Um, they promote violence. They promote bigotry. But the news media spun it around so much that the people that stood up against terrorism, the people that stood up against tyranny, were the bad guys, basically. You know, we were the ones that were wrong. We were the ones that were violent and... They showed us in such a, a bad light. I, I, I was amazed. I couldn't believe just I, how the media, you know, you always hear how the media twists things, but this was amazing to me. This was amazing. I'm not going to take up all the time because I want to next no. they respond <laughs> to, but I could go on about. No, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm agreeing with, uh, with what you're saying. I mean, it is very interesting how the media can... Let's use the word corporate media. How corporate media, <laughs> absolutely, how corporate media, let's distinguish, um, can, can take an event and, and make a headline out of it that can shape uh, someone's mentality about that action, the, 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 the true... Um, uh, happenings uh, of the event. Um, you know, uh, like I said, we were there for Black Joy. We were there to spread love. We were there to, um, of course, stand up for, for, for racial justice and stand up for equality for all people. Um, I didn't see any violence uh, occur, but, you know, I will say that um, the KKK and other white supremacist groups um, and, and pro-heritage groups, um, they sort of kind of create a space, right, for um, a, a violent environment to exist. Um, when they say things on their, uh, their, their, their web pages, um, such as, you know, people of color are raping scoundrels and um, that uh, we're trying to commit genocide against the white race, and uh, uh, bring your guns. You know, yeah, bring all your weapons, and that they're coming armed, and they're ready, and they're full of rage. And um, you know, you have people uh, all, from all over U the U.S. Um, trying to connect with other people uh, about uh, you know how they can galvanize together um, their hatred. Um, that kind of the culmination of all that hatred and racism and and divisiveness. Um, uh, creates this environment where, you know, violence um, may occur. Um, but like I said, I didn't, I didn't see any. Um, you know, I saw organizations coming together uh, for one common goal, um, and that was to be recognized as as people and recognized as first class citizens, and and uh, and just to to make a statement that we were there to be counted and we weren't gonna. Um, just sit back and let these uh, white supremacists uh, and, and heritage groups um, come into a predominantly uh, people, of, a, a, a community that, that is inhabited predominantly by people of color um, uh, and try to divide us, you know. So we were there to take a stand. And um, like I said, I'm proud of, of the actions that uh, Rise Up and, and several of the other organizations um, took. Uh, to make sure that we, we, we kept a positive vibe um, there. And it's unfortunate that uh, we don't really have much control over uh, how corporate media um, portrays uh, events like this that we're a part of, where we're only trying to spread a, spread a positive um, message. And Diane, let me say, let me say, the, um, the police presence was so strong um, the police present, it was overly policed. It was more police than I think needed to be. 
Well, there are hundreds there. Yeah, mm -hmm. hundreds, yeah. hundreds of I think people photos. have yeah. seen the pictures. Yes. Total <laughs> SWAT. Yeah, the there were. Gas masks. Yes. Right mm -hmm. at us. Right at right. us. <laughs> and, and aggressive. Mm -hmm. Overly aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was, just to look at it, it was something out of Nazi mm -hmm. Germany. It was, this was ridiculous. The amount mm -hmm. of money that was spent that day on policing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's your tax dollars right there. I think Christopher right. has a question for y'all. Go ahead, Christopher. Um, yeah, it's sort of a question, but at the same time, it's like acknowledging that um, while we're, we're talking about corporate media skewing the narrative mm -hmm. that actually took place, you also were in control of your own narrative through your social media context, through your live streaming. And Absolutely. so without those, you don't necessarily have a documented um, video outside of like 30-minute people's Right. You know, Instagram. So you've provided a narrative that conflicts with that, and I think that I think that's important because that's this is not the first time that Rise Up has used live streaming, or that other people mm -hmm. have used live streaming to be in control of their own narrative. And it and, and, and so I was not at the uh, at the rally, but I was at work watching uh, the live streaming mm -hmm. through Rise Up, thing, and I was able to like obviously I knew some of these people, but there was a sort of uh, humanity and there's a sort of like dignity mm -hmm. that was like that you could hear voiced by the people as they were talking to each other, like laughing. Mm -hmm. There was joy, sure. like you say. And I think without like you being in control of your own narrative, and, and of course like people coming, like community radio providing you a platform to also express afterwards, that you know, that, that, that skew mm -hmm. becomes way too much. So I just right. wanted to like just acknowledge mm -hmm. that, that you being in control of your narrative was important, and will still continue yeah. to be important as we acknowledge that even right. in our own like yeah. joy, it's <laughs> never, never enough. Yeah, thank you so much for, for saying that, um, you know, it, it is important for us to be able to get our own um, message out there. Because like I said, we can't control what corporate media um, is, is going to portray. Um, so it is important for us to be able to have our own social media outlets and, and tell our own stories, you know. Um, and, and one thing I do want to just mention is that it, it becomes a cycle, right, of... of uh, corporate media taking, you know, certain images and, and, and fueling, um, de fueling and negativity, vision, yeah. Negativity and uh, fear that uh, people Towards should, minorities. Well, that right. people should not come, uh, here's the thing, it, it, um, it, it just maddened me. Uh, yeah. If you looked at the crowd who was there, the hundreds that mm -hmm. managed to find their right. way yes. right. through woods, right. over <laughs> right. right. through brambles, right. trying to get by literally hundreds of right. police in right. total riot gear, yes. right. big guns, right. with their finger right. cocked right yes. on the trigger the whole time. Right. And Th that you would think, I don't even know yeah, what, what you would yeah. think, but they were all there to intimidate mm -hmm. those who would offer any opposition, resistance, right. a different view of the yes. world than this handful, yes. really right. handful of bigoted right. and unfortunately very un uh, unknowing in some ways about yes. real history. Right. So right. that they, right. so that they, unfortunately, there's, there's this thing to talk about how the white working class. And that's why I think this was so important, because of the number of white folks that were there, the number of uh, mm -hmm. true expressions of arm-in-arm uh, arm yes. next to each other, facing down these police, mm -hmm. and also the clear message about that um, white supremacy is really a poison. Yes. And it is something that this program, we talk about racism a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it is our view that it is one of the chief weapons, if not the chief weapon, that, that bosses and the ruling class does, employs, yes. to keep workers, mm -hmm. to keep all marginalized groups separated yes. and apart. Right. And so that's why I am always so proud when we are able to to in the face of what's really sometimes very scary. I mean, anybody who knows Klan and Nazi history yes. has mm -hmm. reason to be scared. But yes, the right. point is that when you are right there with the group, right. you yes. really feel just Power. like just like <laughs> the chant that was over and over. Mm -hmm. I believe that we, we will, will win. win. 
Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. So we only have That's a couple right. minutes left, and so if you have like a closing remark about how this event, mm -hmm. organizing this event, had an impact on you personally, because I'm assuming yes. that neither one of you had ever done this before. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a, this was the first time. This was the first for me um, to attend a, a rally like this. So um, it was definitely very uh it had a powerful impact on me for sure um but i just i guess for me i just it's important for me that uh we continue to just to remind people that that uh, to continue to focus on the real issues and why we were there because corporate media has such a way of twisting things um which really distract uh from the actual issues that are going on in our communities that people of color are facing and that other marginalized groups are facing. Um, so, you know, we do these things for a reason. We have a purpose. Um, uh, we have a main goal. We have an objective. Um, you know, and we may not see a significant change in our lifetime, but we're doing it because we're passionate about it and we believe in justice and we care about um, the real issues and we encourage other people to educate themselves um, on those topics as well. Don't believe everything you hear or see. <laughs> Except when it's under here, too. Exactly. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Don. Um, it just, the impact that it made on me was tremendous. Um, just being out there in the diversity of the crowd, Diane, like you said, um, black, brown, uh, Asian, just everybody coming together. Um, it, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Standing up against the white supremacy, like the, it's capitalism, just everything. We are ready to tear the whole thing down. <laughs> and, and we're unified, and that's what they don't want. They don't want to see the unity. Um, but going in, I was afraid. I was scared. I'm 49 years old. And I was out there with young kids jumping over a fence, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> running through the woods. And um, so it, it, I want to do more. Yeah. It makes you really want to do more. Yeah. And um, yeah. the people are beginning to cry out. The mm -hmm. people are beginning to cry out for justice. And that's what we witnessed on Stone Mountain right. on Saturday. Yeah. All right, we have like uh, 30 seconds left. So give our listeners how they can get in touch with Rise Up, because I know you have a meeting coming up. Yes, um, anybody who is interested in, uh, you know, finding out more about what Rise Up is all about or becoming a member or just interested in um, uh, getting involved in activism, uh, we do have a meeting coming up this Wednesday, uh, I'm sorry, this Thursday, I believe, a membership meeting, Thursday the... 28th, that's Thursday. Thursday the 28th, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, at 6 o'clock, uh, the address is 585 Well Street. Um, Southwest. So uh, we welcome anybody to um, to join us who's uh, interested in learning more about uh, activism and organizing and just uh, who wants to become a little bit more educated um, on the issues. So, so listeners, you have been hearing the, the voices of uh, Dawn O'Neill and uh, Annette Taylor from Rise Up who were key organizers of the very successful um, demonstration against white supremacy Saturday at the Stone Mountain Park. Mm -hmm. And that's it for today. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ozzy. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. This is Diane Mathewitz saying goodbye for the Labor Forum. We'll be back again next Monday, and it'll be May 2nd. <laughs>